Morning folks and welcome back. I'm out for a paddle this morning on the Dillham Canal with my buddy Gavin. Hi Gavin. Morning. And uh, he suggested coming, coming for a paddle down here a few months ago. It's an old disused uh, canal and it's, uh, it's sort of a little bit overgrown and the reeds encroach into the channel a little bit now which makes for quite a nice sort of intimate, quiet little waterway. Um, and the other bonus is that it's uh, it's not accessible to motorised craft at all. So you know the only people you're ever going to see up here are other canoeists. So uh, yeah, looks really nice. That's bird watching or or bunny pinging. Hagen Hasselhoff's seat for Baywatch, <laughs> the Norfolk version. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an image in my head now. <laughs> well, I think of Pamela Anderson instead. Yeah. <laughs> So the Dillham Canal dates back to the early 1800s and uh, it seems to follow the original course of the river from what you can tell from the map. Um, so I guess what they did is uh, perhaps dredge the channel um, and uh, improve the banks and put in a towpath I guess so that they could uh, get goods and stuff along the, along the waterway a bit more easily. And uh, I don't know when they stopped using it. But uh, I guess once the railways came along, because uh, obviously they had a, a much easier means of getting goods from A to B by rail than they did um, they did by river, which obviously took a lot longer. Where we put in at Wafer Bridge, um, there's been a crossing point of the river there for centuries. Um, there was originally a ford there, that's the name Wayford Bridge, um, and uh, and the ford was positioned there because they found um, a good solid uh, section of riverbed, basically that they could get um, that they could get wagons and horses and carts or whatever over, and uh, yeah, and then. Some years later, the bridge was obviously built, and uh, and it's remained a crossing ever since. You can park at the inn there by the bridge. Um, they do charge you a um, a small fee, um, but uh, the idea being that you know you can use their car park, but when you finished and you you get back at the end of your day you stop in and have a drink or something to eat and um, and the amount that you've paid to park there is deducted off your bill if you see what I mean so it doesn't as long as you stop in and you know have a drink at the end of the day you're not you know you're not out of pocket Gorgeous bridge. Glamping pods. Morning. 
Gorgeous, isn't it? Lovely. Yeah. Morning. Morning. Beautiful day again, isn't it? Gorgeous, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. There were three lads on a, um, a kayak overnight trip. They just spent the night in a, in a little bit of woodland back there. So there are there are um, wild camping options uh, along this section. Obviously at your own risk. But uh, yeah, they were doing a kind of out and back trip. I don't know where they started from, but uh, they seem to be having fun. Buzzard. But he went out of focus just as I, just as it took off. Fancy a cup of tea, Gavin? Yeah, why not? I that bought a good. I bought a flask. Find a little spot to pull over, shall we? Yeah, yeah that looks good. I don't know how well you can see this, but uh, this is where we put in, where it says hotel there, at Wayford Bridge, and we paddled along here. This is where that lovely red brick um, bridge was, and then we met those other canoeists about here somewhere, and when we're, we're, just, we're just here, we think. Um, we can see a tree line on the other side of the river, and I think, or we think, it's that little bit of woodland there. So we're not very far from the end of the, uh, of the canal where it becomes the river again because the canal is basically just a section of the river ant um, so yeah we've only sort of got to get as far as there but um, we might paddle on for another 10 minutes or so and see how far we get but we have to we have to get back um, we both got to be back at sort of lunchtime today so um, we're gonna just uh, see how far we can get if you're thinking of paddling any of the Norfolk broads highly recommend this book here. In fact, it was Gavin that put me onto this book, um, and it's really good. It's got, uh, the, the front section of the book is, um, is all about the broads and the different paddles that there are here, and it's got all the rivers in there and some good bits of history and all sorts. Um, and then the second part of the book um, covers all of the access points um, for various sections of the broads. And then it's got some useful um, information and stuff in the back. There's, there's a list of pubs and accommodation, campsites, all sorts. So yeah, definitely recommend this book if you're uh, interested in exploring the Norfolk Broads by canoe or kayak. Um, yeah, really good.
I've always wanted to eat a swan. Yeah. One of these would be perfect, wouldn't they? Yeah. Still young, still nice and tender. really hard to imagine how this canal would have once been you know it was built for commerce it's just a narrow little thing now but you know it would have been would have been a busy waterway <clears throat> with goods being transported now it's just so quiet and tranquil really is very beautiful running water ahead so I think that must mean we're approaching Honing Bridge. And here we are at the end of the canal. This is the old lock at Honing. A little bit further along is Honing Bridge. So thanks for joining us on this uh, lovely Sunday morning paddle on the Dillham Canal. We've had a lovely time. I think I'll be coming back at some point in the future to explore a bit more. But for now we've got to turn around and head back. So thanks for watching and uh, I'll see you soon.